So let's get into a basic patch. So if you want a completely mono delay, you need to go into B and out of B. And we're going to stick with mono for now. And you can hear my loop, basic sort of bass riff with some tonal changes. Let's go up to 50-50 dry wet. Faster delay time. Feedback's around half, so let's feed some of that signal into the delay. You can see this is affecting delay level. We could go to 100% and just fire a bit in. Which will be very similar to just hitting hold. When you've got some feed up, of course. Now change the time while that's held. Let's go fully wet. Play around with that. Reverse it. That infinite hold is going to go back to feedback. So if that's really low, it's going to just stop. If we do this again. high feedback and I take this off even though I've no delay feed and I'm fully wet this is now going to decay down set by that feedback level and you can do all of this under CV as well we can get delays that go to 110% which will make the volume bloom but you just got to be wary of your output level so that's 100, 110, and yeah, it's about to rise. So here's the time switches. And in this middle position, if we count the clock pulses, it is the number of clock pulses that's actually there. We've got 1 to 16 all the way around. Divide this down at the faster times. I'll go from 17 round to 32 for more odd loops. And this works great when you're sort of doing stereo, dual looping, sort of polymeter, polyrhythmic style things. Let's hear the same thing in stereo. So now in stereo, and I want to go mono to stereo, so I'm going to input A and out of A and B into my sound card. Same sequence, same clock. Let's just check out everything around half and listen to these two different times creating a stereo image. So let's get into some different patches, different sounds, and CV in various parameters as well. So with a little bit of CV, the DLD just sort of oozes gorgeousness, quality. I'm still absolutely blown away by this thing. I've had it for a while. I keep just CVing the hell out of it. Sometimes more controlled, sometimes more randomly. And it's just great. So I wanted to create a really melodic and nice patch. And here's my input. rings being sequenced by the audio damage sequencer one let's just hear the delay added
I've got some random stepped modulation at a step length of seven and nine, just so it's not all looping round and this is a 64 step sequence. So it's all gonna overlap slightly and let's CV the time per side. So we'll dry this side. You can hear that delay change. Let's do this side. Let's use a slow LFO to trigger reverse on one side and I'm going to use the accent from my sequencer to trigger reverse on the other. We could do this with longer times. Let's actually CV the amount being fed into the delay. On both sides. Here's the fully wet. Really gorgeous as it sort of flicks in and out at different times. We don't get that re-pitching that you would on an analog delay, which I much prefer for this application. And that level change in the input to the delay, as well as reverse on and off, just sounds great. Let's now CV the feedback. And the delay feed and the feedback is a set of phase modulated LFOs from the WMD PDO. So let's check out audio rate delays and the volt per octave tracking. Now this is going to be my input sound. Short little clicky burst of noise through a VCA with a simple decay envelope controlling the sound. Here's opening up the decay so you can hear this noise. Basic sound. Now I've got a clock coming in, about 7 hertz. switch in the middle position, mono into B, mono out of B. So the clock is the delay time, and let's check that out. Nice basic delay. If we divide this down to an eighth note, look here we're getting this resonant delay, which is car plus strong synthesis. A short impulse, exciting a delay line to create a string-like sound. Let's go fully wet. And feedback is going to be the thing that determines the length of the note. Now by default, if we move the delay time, it's going to quantize between these numbers on the time knob. You know, that sort of steps between these different time divisions and multiplications. Now if I hold hold, this will be unquantized. That's a much smoother change. Now to get out of that behaviour, 
simply turn the time knob again. I'm going to add a CV to the time B. And this is a simple C major scale, playing up across two octaves and then reversing back down again. As it currently stands, a higher voltage on the time input is going to equate to a higher knob turn. It's going to divide down to a longer decay time. The opposite behaviour to what we'd want with volt per octave tracking. If we add a volt, we want that to go up an octave, higher in frequency, not longer delay times, or a lower pitch, essentially for car plus strong synthesis. So when we go into this unquantized mode, by pressing hold and moving that, this also knocks this into volt per octave tracking. Hear that moving back up and down this major scale. Again, if we don't want that, turn the time knob without holding hold. And again, to go back in, hold it, flip time. Now, if I increase the clock rate coming in, this will also increase the pitch. Now, another great way to change normal delays, clock delays, audio rate delays is to put a filter in the feedback path. So if I take the send output into a filter, this is a low pass filter, and I bring the filter's output back into the return, and turn the feedback down, I'm gonna use the input level to the filter and the filter's cutoff to control my own feedback loop. So here's raising the cutoff. Notice we've got this more muted string-like tone. Almost like hitting a bit of drain pipe. Cut off open wider. Then we'll slowly bring that down. So let's check out the send and return and colour in more standard delays as we've seen in the audio rate delays. Here's a simple sequence. The DLD is clocked and in time, feed a bit of signal to the delay, again this is mono in and out. Here's a standard feedback. Great clean sound. Now I've got the send patched up to the input on the dual Borg filter. This is in high pass mode. And I'm going to patch the filter back out into the return. And then listen what happens when I raise the delay feed to so the amount of signal going into that delay. Change the wet. Slightly more coloured, but wide open delay feedback path, even with feedback down. If I turn this feedback up, we'll double up on the feedback and it gets out of control quite quickly. Let's sweep this high pass filter. Drop the delay feed and we'll hear this trail in the high pass loop. That's what's left, fire a bit more in. If you try to resonant peak, let's use the delay feed to fire off dub delays. Let's flick this round to a low pass. Bring the cut off up. Lovely and sort of warm, more analog style delay tones by using a filter in the feedback path.
So let's look at sound on sound looping. And this technique uses the delay feed to feed sound in at 100% feedback. And I'm going to change the pitch of my input to build up chords, layering these sounds at 100% feedback, creating monophonic layers that build up a chord tone. This is my bass sound. Let's go dry. This is the PDO from WMD with some modulation and I'm changing the pitch on this keychain module. And for those that are interested, I'm going to use a C minor 9 chord. C, E flat, G, B flat and a D above that. I've also got a little melody that we're going to fade in as well. So I need to turn my sound up so that something's coming in from my mixer to the DLD. I'm fully wet. I've got no delay feed. This is controlled by this crossfader knobs from Rabbit Elephant. Simply got an offset patched in. I'm fading up the offset voltage, the equivalent of turning up the delay feed and fading it back down. That will sit in the delay buffer and loop at 100% feedback. And then I'm going to change the pitch and do that again. So let's start with our first note. No feed, feedback 100%, fully wet. Let's open up that delay feed. So we've got a really long delay time, that's why it's taking a bit of time to actually get into that buffer. Fade this down, let's add the G. And you can hear me moving the crossfader, so we're going to get some volume changes. Here's the G, I'll leave this wide open. That phasing we're getting is where the C note has been added back into the buffer again. There's that G being fed in. We're actually going to shorten the delay time a bit. Fed that out. Let's go to the D above, the 9. Add the 7, B flat. Moving the crossfader on this one so we might get some swells. Hear okay, that B flat swelling in and out. Finally, the E flat. So I'm going to slowly fade up and down. So there's our chord tone. I'm going to turn that down in my mixer, turn up the little sequence, and the sequence is completely out of time so. As I fade and leave this open to sort of keep adding sound into this buffer, and the buffer's essentially one time through the delay's time. It's going to re-add this sequence in depending on where that is, and it's out of time, so we might get some little flutters and flams and little clashes in the sequence. Let's leave that wide open. Turn it up in the mixer a bit more. this sequence is sort of overlapping on itself. It's a really t nice technique for getting sort of moving and quite organic textures. Now to get this to fade out, we can simply turn the feedback down. Turn it all the way down. So let's check out windowing through what's in this buffer. And first, I'm actually going to clear it. So hold reverse and infinite hold. You see that flash after two seconds? This clears that delay buffer. I could also clear this side. There's the flash. But I'm in B. Mono in, mono out. And I'm going to use a speech about the freedom of speech with Frank Zappa talking about pornography and music and amongst other things and to get some sound into this buffer. The reason I've cleared it is I was just working with this patch before filming 
and I actually managed to window through to what I had before, some of the synth sounds and the sound on sound looping, because I'd not filled much of this sort of three minute buffer up. So it's all clear, there's nothing in there other than what I put in. This is my clock pulse. My time is set to eight steps. So once I hit play, we're gonna listen at a 50-50 mix, and this will start to overlap and refill this delay buffer. If this is at 100%, it's gonna be infinitely looping. I want some delay feed. And let's hit play and get some sound in. As soon as I hear this restart, the delay time, I'm gonna knock the delay feed down again so we're not building up layers upon layers of these vocals. Music videos and rock music. I don't think that music qualifies as pornography. And especially since this whole business started with words. We're talking about words here. All right. All the complaints were about words. All right, take the pornography out there. Is there no filth, no obscenity that you think would qualify to be suppressed? We're talking about words, and I don't believe that there is any word that needs to be suppressed. There's no scientific or, uh, so there it was. reason why you should keep... And especially since this whole business started with words, we're talking about... This is looping at 100%, no feed, no dry sound. Is there no filth, no obscenity that you think would qualify now, to be if suppressed? I Set infinite loop. Talking about words. Feedback. I don't believe that there is any word. And delay feed. Needs to be suppressed. There's have no effect. And rock music. However, we can mess with the time. About words. Yeah, there is there no fill. Let's go down into this where it's more obvious. To be suppressed. To be suppressed. To be suppressed. Think would qualify to be suppressed. Think would qualify. And this is looping within this delay time. To be suppressed. No obscenity that you think would qualify to be suppressed. Reverse it. No obscenity, no obscenity, no obscenity, no obscenity. Now to window through, we simply hold the infinite hold and use feedback. So here we're not on what we first were. No obscenity, no obscenity, no obscenity, the truth sanity, the truth sanity, the truth think we, the truth think we, the truth think what the truth think what the truth sanity, no obscenity, no obscenity, no obscenity, no filth. No Go back to a longer loop. Would qualify to be suppressed. We're talking about words. And Let's do this I don't again. Believe that there is any word. Take the sanity, 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 the truthy, the truthy, the truthy, the truthy, the truthy, the truthy, pornography out there. Is there no filth? No obscenity, the truth pornography out there. Is there no filth? No filth, no filth, no filth, no filth, no filth, 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 no, there no, there no words. And you can obviously CV all this. You could feed this into the other side to work as a more conventional delay in a dual mono sense. So let's try that out. One other really cool feature is what we call ping lock, and we can actually get rather than one ping feeding both channels, so one master clock, either internal or external, and two divisions on A and B, we can get two completely independent ping locks, or tempos, or clocks, however you want to look at it. If we hold hold and hit ping once, that's now locked the B channel, and we would do the same to get back out of it. So now for the A channel, I want to ping a faster clock, I want faster delay from the this loop on B, and I just want sort of a nice springy fast delay, so notice this hasn't changed B, because I'd ping locked it. Hold, hold, and hit ping once. So now, I can clock in new times, so a couple more tricks with the DLD. Hit like and subscribe for more videos every week and check the Patreon link in the description to see how you can support my channel.